Now, surely this is just a coincidence. There's there's nothing to see here. But Variety says GQ editor who pulled an article critical of Warner Studio head David Zasloff just somehow magically is producing a movie for Warner Brothers. Now, this just happened on July 3rd. There was an article, which was a hot take story, called How Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zasloff Became Public Enemy Number One in Hollywood. This piece was written by a freelance film critic by the name of Jason Bailey, and it slammed Zasloff for being a Logan Roy-esque mogul. And then it was gone. It appears to have been rewritten to be a little more friendly to Zasloff, and it was available only on the mobile version of GQ. However, that also <laughs> just disappeared. This is Variety asking the question, not me. Quote, but did GQ's editor's relationship with Warner Brothers play a role in softening and ultimately removing the story? Unquote. Well, here we are, <laughs> July 5th, two days after this whole thing went down, and GQ editor-in-chief Will Welch is producing a movie for Warner Brothers. The two are certainly not connected, right? Title of that film is The Great Chinese Art Heist, which is based upon a 2018 GQ article. John M. Chu of crazy rich Asians fame is attached to, to direct that picture and it's about an audacious European museum crime wave that targeted Chinese antiques. Sources say, these are variety sources say, Welch was involved in the discussion surrounding the removal of the article by Bailey, which was critical of David Zasloff, and also made the call to pull the rewritten, more friendly version of the story critical of David Zasloff, which was edited down by 500 words. Now, those same sources, according to Variety, say Warner Brothers Discovery complained about the initial story to two GQ editors, one of whom was Welch, the one who has got a movie. A representative from GQ says, quote, a piece published by GQ on Monday was not properly edited before going live. <laughs> and by edited, I mean, it may be said a little too much about David Zasloff. Just asking. After a revision was published, the writer of the piece asked to have their byline removed, at which point GQ decided to unpublish the piece in question. GQ regrets the editorial, editorial error that led to a story being published before it was ready. A spokesperson for Warner Brothers Discovery offered a slightly different take. Quote, the freelance reporter made no attempt to reach out to Warner Brothers Discovery to fact check the substance of the piece before publishing. We contacted the outlet, meaning GQ, and asked that numerous inaccuracies be corrected. In the process of doing so, of correcting those numerous inaccuracies, the editors ultimately decided to pull the piece. Variety goes on, still removing an entire story from a news outlet's website would constitute an extreme action and is almost never done except in the most egregious cases of journalistic malpractice. Yes, Mary Sue, I'm looking at you. Even then, an editor's note would typically appear when readers clicked on an excised story with an explanation of why it was killed. I think I know why it was killed. Do you know why it was killed? Variety goes on, Welch's involvement in the decision-making process would constitute a clear conflict of interest. As a producer on a Warner Brothers movie in early development, Welch would meet the criteria from the Society of Professional Journalists Code of Ethics that says reporters and editors should, quote, avoid conflicts of interest, real or perceived, and disclose unavoidable 
conflicts. Furthermore, journalistic best practices dictate that stories should never just disappear <laughs> and that any significant corrections be noted with full transparency. I don't know, this is looking pretty transparent to me. You got a movie over there and... A Warner Brothers Discovery source says no one at the corporate level was aware of Welch's ties to the movie studio. <laughs> As for what changed between that initial critical and inaccurate article by Bailey between the first and second versions, it appears from archived versions of the web to be mostly the tone of the article. Gone from the softened version was Bailey's description of Zasloff as akin to Richard Gere's ruthless financial character in Pretty Woman, <laughs> who boasts of selling off companies for their parts. This is getting super believable current year Hollywood, isn't it? Now the author Bailey declined to comment on Warner Brother Discovery's characterization of his work as containing multiple inaccuracies or that he never reached out to Zasloff for comment. So this is my opinion. What we're seeing is exactly what it is. In my opinion, somebody was told to pull this if they wanted to keep something they wanted to do. I think a writer understood that if he made a stink about it, no one would let him work at their garbage tier Hollywood website again, because that's how the world works. What do you think about this? What do you think about comparing David Zasloff to Richard Gere's hooker banging corporate shark from Pretty Woman? I'm Salty Travel and C. You have a good one.